This could maybe work. All right, um, so what's up? How's your day going? Day's good. Day's good, it's my first time in the office. Yeah, and you're welcome to come many times. Did you get your keys? Did the Lenecke keys? I have no idea where they are. All right, you've already lost the keys to the them. office. So Michael Dwan, he's been on the vlog before, not uh, like a formal way. You can walk through. That's walk right, you can, yeah. Walk right. Over, <laughs> under. I just need a little more space. This is Jesus. actually a thousand square foot startup, amazing office. We're just in the middle Yeah. Of I've shown the office on this vlog before. It's actually really, what is it, like 100 square feet? Maybe? Something. Is it like 10 by 10? Yeah. Oh. I feel like 12 by 12. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's tiny. Because I can dunk 10 and this feels just beyond that. <laughs> we do have this little space here. We could, yeah, Michael could sit out there. Except it's raining, but most days it might work out for you. Um, so Michael Dwan, he's been on the vlog before. He works at High Rise. We've, you know, you've kind of been on it. You've never really been interviewed. I've been vlog bombed. What do you do here? You start starting with the hard questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what paid to deal with people? <laughs> yeah. Michael the uh, CTO. Pretty much whatever is necessary to help make we need to do this into something that's shipped. Yeah. To keep the sure. keep the boat afloat. Yeah. So Michael's the CTO. You were like, uh, yeah, one of the first people I talked to about like this this project. You've been here since the beginning. Um, what, uh, so some of the cool stuff that we're working on is we're about to get in a um, new mobile app out. Uh, looks like you're maybe working on it Oh, it just crashed. That's not a good demo. Ah. Everything is built in, in C Sharp. So everything is written, both our Android app and our iOS app, everything's in C Sharp. We didn't have to do like some of it in C Sharp and some of it in Java or some of it in C Sharp and some of it in Objective-C. That's right. That's very interesting. Yeah, so that way we're we're doing the same shared code base thing, but it's uh, like unlike some of the shared code base tools where you have like a web app, um, it's not web; it's all native. And the compiler tricks would mean that we are we take a shared code base that that goes down into Java interop and and down into C sharp interop or so to C um, C interop. It's native, but we're using the same code base. Yeah, and we've got access to all the APIs. Oh, that's the, yeah, that's the one that's gonna go so, out. The brand new producer rewrite. support. So this is what this app looks like. It's a rewrite. It looks pretty much like the old app. It was rewritten from scratch to mimic the old one, but the goal here was just to, uh, with a single code base, we can have uh, have an iOS and an Android app where if we want to add something, because most of our we're, we're forms over data app, so everything is just a UI that reflects data on the back end. So we don't really need to do that many platform native tricks, but unlike some of the other uh, cross-platform tools, if we wanted to get dirty with say Siri or Google Now or something or whatever their uh, assistant is, we just write C-sharp code. Right. And that, that targets each platform. And What drove you to this versus, I don't know what the other ones are called anymore. Like there's a bunch of these like cross-platform yeah. things. Yeah, well, the whole thing, I'll be brief, because this was a long process, like a couple months of, of this isn't, so the apps haven't been full-time, we've been doing this along with all the other stuff, so it's it's like, the criteria was, we had an old iOS app written in Objective-C, and we wanted an Android app, so we were thinking, okay, we have to write, uh, we gotta learn Java, and, and that's not a problem in and of itself, but it's just the context switch from web to iOS to Android now means that if you fix a, we add a feature to the web app, we gotta put it in a bunch of places, and it just becomes time consuming. Right. And uh, iOS has, is changing. We don't wanna have to debug every new release of every every phone or uh, tablet or whatever have you, but, so we're trying to find something to let us say like, you, you know, let's just hack an, an Android app we're looking for. We actually couldn't find a single consulting shop who would build an Android app for us. So we just said, that's it, we'll just do it in house. And in the process, like we knew we were gonna maintain two separate code bases, so we started looking at some cross-platform options. Weren't we looking for freelancers? We weren't looking for, we were looking for like a single freelancer we could bring on right. for like a good chunk of time. But the only people we could find were like shops that like multiple people would get involved in. Yeah. Right? I think we wanted to avoid the shop and we wanted to kind of a little bit more direct employee kind of just a, Just a person. But then a we guy still could find would it. Come in. Yeah, we yeah. can find anybody. And that just goes to the iOS was no problem. Android has an opening. So if you know Android development, it would probably be a good time to just go ahead and start uh, consulting for people who have money and don't have time. 
Uh, but the big problem there, it's a slippery slope. If we hired someone, we were gonna say, we'll hire someone else to have, to build brand new code base, and it's like, keep it read-only simple because we knew we needed an Android app. But it turns into a problem where from, from the day one that we ship, we're gonna have uh, a stagnant code base that's, that's rotting with each passing day. Yeah. So we thought about, okay, we have, a, we have an a, uh, iOS app at this point that hasn't been updated in a year. We've got no Android app, so let's look at our options. The immediate ones were web app wrappers, so Cordova and, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of them like Ionic or I think those are the same thing. Some of the uh, Ruby Motion, anything that's like just a like a web app that runs in a in, a, in an iframe equivalent yeah. or like in a in a web view. Yeah. Um, but then we, those are okay. But you're you're essentially building now uh, another web app. Which so we've got our back end, the API, and we've got the web front end. Then we have the apps that we still have to build and maintain. Then we have the web views that sit within them. It's not truly native, the build, it, it's not ideal. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell, it's just not really a pleasant experience using those apps. Yeah. So um, those didn't work. We looked at um, React Native was one that was, that was, this was a year ago when we were first evaluating. And that one is actually really interesting. It takes the approach where you're writing in JavaScript, the JavaScript on the fly is interpreted and turned into native views. Hmm. Uh, and that, that had a lot of promise, but it was a little early. Um, I tried it, and the next day there was an update and the build broke. I was trying Android first. I know iOS well, so that's easier to debug, but it was kind of a telling sign that out, like stepping outside of the, uh, the React Native envelope was very, uh, very abrasive. So, and then the other thing is if we did want to say we want a custom control, we've got to go into Java now. We have to build an Android Studio and a Java app to actually bootstrap the whole thing that then mounts React Native. Hmm. And then iOS, we'd have to do the equivalent thing. Yeah, yeah. So that would mean that our apps would be uh, we, we would have in just our mobile world Java, Objective C, C, and uh, and then JavaScript and HTML and CSS. Right. And one of the big things that that's we right now across our stack in production we have um, so obviously Ruby is our biggest uh, JavaScript for the for the browser and uh, Go for a couple um, performance sensitive services on the back end and C Sharp. We want to cut that down so we have three three languages. We have our very fast everything Ruby. JavaScript for the for browsers and then some kind of static language and I think C sharp is going to be the winner there Got it. So oh, why on earth would we now just bring in a whole bunch more that we need to maintain right? So that was something that we weren't really excited about so right. simplicity is key. So in the process of evaluating all these I stumbled on uh, Xamarin uh, I did, from unity the 3d engine. I was just hacking around with a maze mm. Builder and ended up finding C sharp and I was like, oh, it's C sharp. I don't know. I, I did C sharp for a long time uh, 10 years ago. Actually, it's funny. 10 years ago, High Rise launched. I was moving to Chicago and um, writing C Sharp, desperately wanting to get to Ruby. And now, 10 years later, I'm writing a lot of Ruby on the app that just launched that I, I looked up huh. to 37 signals at the time. And I'm looking back at C Sharp and being like, holy crap, that's some really cool stuff going on there. So, anyway, simplifying our, our tooling so we have the minimal languages, the minimal context shifts, and a lot of reuse as much as we can. So, Playing with Unity, found C Sharp, started looking and, and ended up seeing Xamarin in this whole thing and they do cross-platform apps. And I remember the day I was gonna try it, it was just like, I was about to just go with React Native and just thought I should just give this a try for fairness sake. And had an app running on Android and iOS simultaneously in about an hour that just said hello. And then I was like, okay, this isn't too bad. I was starting to get the hang of C Sharp again, and it's come a long way. So I was like, okay, there's some stuff to. It's crusty, and it's you know the only people who do this are are like, you know, older folks who are working in the verbs on uh, banking software. On, uh, banking software, exactly, or something, something yeah. like that. Basically, yeah. the Bill Lumberg uh, in a tech thing. Yeah. So wasn't too keen on it, but I thought I'd give it a try. So I just had a very simple thing that would hit an API, bring context down and list it, and I had a contact browser in like two hours. And it's like, okay, this is pretty cool. And then as I kept digging more and more into it, it's like, this is this is actually really good. Hmm. Uh, it was early, this was uh, um, May or June 2016, so Microsoft had just bought Xamarin, so it was kind of, um, it was starting to receive a lot more attention. And I won't go into the details of the .NET world, but they had just open sourced the whole stack, like the non.NET framework. Basically, they just open source the whole standard library and said, here it is. Hmm. The only thing that's not open source, I think, is like proprietary Windows stuff that we won't use anyway. Right. So it's kind of gotten to a point now where like it's not really closed source. I can I can actually go find what, what this method is doing by looking at GitHub of all places. Yeah. So was, that was actually a really interesting selling point. So it's open source, and then the Xamarin stuff is open source, and then, then what we're, we're built on is actually Xamarin forms. 
So like without, I, I, this is a, a more complex topic, but Xamarin is like, Xamarin iOS is C sharp to iOS native compiler. So it takes C sharp and it compiles it into bytecode that runs on iOS, which it's like native code. It's not like uh, React Native, which is interpreting JavaScript. So you have a JavaScript bundle that it then evaluates on the fly and it converts that into views. This compiles into views. So the binary that we ship, the app that we ship is that that is what runs. Yeah. So and then then Xamarin Android is the equivalent for Android. So yeah. what's really cool is that means that we're writing we're writing C sharp that talks directly to the APIs on each platform. So if we want to tap in, you know, it's not like uh, if we were writing a web app and then Apple comes out with this cool thing with Siri, you're kind of out of luck. Right. This is we can do that. Right. We can do scene kit. We can we can do all. You know, we can write AR stuff if we want. We can do. I'm trying to think of the stuff they come out with, like the handoff thing. So like you can go from our app into the web app. We can do all these things by just essentially putting the right bits in the right place so that yeah. Apple can do their thing. Yeah. We can have watch apps and yeah. stuff. It yeah. all just works. Yeah. What's been the biggest challenge to kind of adopting this versus, uh, I don't know, just going into Anything iOS else? or something? I think probably the biggest thing, when you do iOS, you're you're talking right to Apple's stuff when you're using... Um, I mean, when you when you build native iOS, you you're you're writing right to to Apple's frameworks like Cocoa UI Kit. When you're writing Android, you're you're using whatever that NDK and Android's tooling. This is another layer above that, so it's a little bit different. So you have to know enough to say like it was really easy for me to write the iOS app. So the way we approached it is, I knew enough iOS to be able to build something, and if something got if I went off the rails a little bit, I knew how to do it over there. So it was more like mapping it back to how to do it in this new world, which is almost identical, but it's just a little bit different. Um, and then Android, I was kind of out. I, I was learning Android to do this, so that was probably the biggest challenge. Is like I was learning math with a calculator, and then as soon as you don't have a calculator, you're pretty screwed. And then when I would go online and look for, well, how do I do? How do I make this thing happen? Whatever. I didn't even know the words to search for because I had a layer that was that was a crutch that was doing a lot of work for me. So that made it really hard to get the thing uh, to understand well, how to how to even do what I needed yeah. to do. Yeah. Uh, so that was a little bit challenging. So like, it's the type of thing that if I were doing this all over again, I would build. I would spend like three days or like a week building. I already knew iOS, but and like John, the other guy who worked with this, it would probably be good for both of us to say we're going to build an iOS app, a pure native iOS app in Xcode. That's like just. A to do list. It doesn't have to talk to the web, just build it and then do the same thing in Android so that we at least learn the differences of how do you like the build tooling? How does that <laughs> stuff work? If we did that, I feel like we would know enough terminology to get off the ground to get our, you know, to understand where north is here and then then say, okay, well, now that we know the basics, we can now put this powerful toolkit right on top of that and run with it. Got it. So, but yeah. so that still sounds a little dangerous. I mean, would you advise if there's somebody here who's like watching this and they're like, I don't know mobile development. Should they even start with the C sharp stuff? You know, like should they even start looking at Microsoft and Xamarin yet, or should they just start going build iOS apps natively? Well, yeah, it depends on the goal. So, like, I think if you're a, you know, there's some really successful um, pure Mac shops out there. If your goal is to build beautiful Mac software, then this is overhead you don't need. Yeah. If your goal is to do cross platform, then by all means, it's it's a good way to do it. Um, I would say like companies like. Um, like Uber, who their whole business is done through native, they have so many people anyway that maintaining two apps isn't really a problem. Right, right. Um, if you're a company like us that you've got a web app and now you need mobile, uh, this is a no-brainer. I feel like, I mean, they, we, we, have, we have a very sophisticated app that two people built in part-time. Yeah. And I feel like that is a selling point for the service. So, yeah. so if your goal is just to get something out and you want to like, if you're just building iOS, no. There's a lot of people who start like they, they you know, um, They'll build. They'll use React Native to build an iOS app, and then it's like, well, of course you're going to end up with problems because React Native and Xamarin are are both of these are similar. Like you you write in this language, and then that comes down to the platform. So if Apple comes out with here's a new Flexbox layout or something that you need to use, you have to wait for someone else to implement that for you. Yeah. Uh, so the way Xamarin's done is it's an auto generated thing with a little bit of hand holding, so that like iOS 11 comes out. They're just they're rebuilding bindings so that you you can you can pull it down and start using the iOS betas right now. Hmm. Um, so that's cool. But if, if you're not going to be doing cross platform, it's not worth it. Got it. Uh, but on the other end, if you've never done any mobile, then I would say the bar should be lower. And you're not building a Twitter app with crazy animations and all this like stuff moving everywhere. Then uh, you could get something up and running in a few days. That's that does what you need. Yeah. Interesting. All right. We'll close it down there because it's been like. Almost 20 minutes of a convo already. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, unless, is there anything else you want to share? We'll get you on here again for, the, for sure, another sure. Uh, 
another vlog entry. Where can people find you on Twitter? At Michael Duan. And I think that high rise slash about lists people. Yep, it does so now. Mind that too. Yeah. Or it's always been there, but now I'm finally linking to it again. And it's finally, I, I just redid it. I just redid it yesterday. And I, it's at the moment converting better now. So mm -hmm. my redo may have worked. So yeah, highrisehq.com slash about. Check it out. It's so far so Just good. follow everyone. Yeah, just They're go down amazing. the list.